Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the impact of approach speed and landing distance. Uh, the key element and the thing we want to take away from this video is how important it is to hit the speed that you need to hit in order to safely land the plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to do three different landings in this plane. Now we're going to come in a little too slow, we're going to come too fast, and then we're going to come in just right and see what that does to our landing distance. Now again, this is a pretty neat little demonstration. It's something worth trying in every different airplane to kind of get a feel for what's different about it. But remember, there are going to be some things in the simulator that just don't work out in the real world, and I'll try to kind of point those out as we go. Well, let's get started. So here we are. This is a Danbury Municipal Airport. Uh, this is one of my favorite runways in Connecticut because there's a valley you have to actually fly the airplane through in order to safely put yourself down on runway tree five. This is actually, this is literally what it looks like and it's darn sketchy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do everything standard. We're going to use our flaps as we normally do and we're going to start by doing a landing at about 65 knots. Um, actually, we'll go a little slow. We'll call it 62 and a half knots so that we can use their manufacturer's recommendation between 60 and 65. So let's go ahead and unpause real quickly here. I'm going to go ahead and dump the flaps all the way down, reset my view so I can see what I'm doing, and start working to get my 65 knots. Now, I remember in the early days of a flying an airplane, uh, you, it's really, really easy to keep the speed you want when you're heavy. Uh, when you start getting a little bit lighter, it becomes progressively more and more difficult in order to safely get that speed that you want. So we're doing about 65. It's going to be about right there. I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle forward a little bit. Remember, the slower the plane goes, the larger your throttle power changes are going to have to be in order to safely do what you need to do to get it there. So that's about 65 knots right there. I'm going to go ahead and back it up. Again, flaps are all the way down. We've made it a dirty, dirty airplane so that we can go ahead and try this out. Now, the interesting thing is, in the real world, it's almost impossible to get an aircraft this consistent as far as speed. And the simulator actually disabled the wind completely, although I think I must have left a little bit on, because I noticed that flight sim always ignores what you set it to in the settings and just picks its own setting when you get in the simulator. But whatever, it'll work fine for us today. So that's about 61. That's about 62 and a half knots, which is exactly between the uh, manufacturer's specification, like I was saying a minute ago. Now, in the real world, if I could get a speed this consistent in this plane, huh, I'd get a gold medal. You just can't do it. Just way too much turbulence. Looking on my left there, you can see why this is such a darn dangerous approach because I have that really serious looking mountain, which of course is things like birds and stuff that like to fly out of it and surprise you. And again, oh my gosh, you can just see how sketchy this is pretty much right away. It's about 64. I'm going to knock a couple RPM off and get us a little bit closer to that fancy manufacturer's recommendation. Again, our plane is on uh, flaps are all the way down. No wind. This is just going to be a pretty standard approach here. Start back on the throttle a little bit. I don't want to pick up too much speed here. That big old number 35 is looking pretty good. One thing I am noticing is um, my nose is slightly down at this speed. So that's a pretty indicative of just how fast I'm actually really coming down here. Normally, you'd want to be relatively level. It's about 61, getting a little slow. And that's about enough. We'll go ahead and pull the throttle back, and we'll go ahead and play our classic game of keep away with the ground here. Just comes up a little bit. And we got a little bit of a crosswind. Thanks, Microsoft. You suck. And we're down. Hold the brakes full force. Again, we're using the brakes here in order to demonstrate what's going on. And our stopping point is going to put us just past the middle of the next runway, which, oh my gosh, I hate it when I do this in the real world. So we can see our baseline is uh, basically right here, as you can see from the end of the runway. We've used, uh, it's probably going to be a little over 1,000 feet, call it 1,200 feet after the end of the runway there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to land again, but this time we're going to be doing it a little slow. All right, just getting the airplane all nice and set up here. And we've gotten the brilliant all dirty. I've uh, reduced my speed to literally the bottom of the green arc. I'm going basically minimum speed in this aircraft right now. And uh, one thing I'm noticing right away is I can't see the runway during this approach. My nose is uh, sitting here pretty at about five and a half degrees. And it is, I literally, I can't see the runway that I'm trying to land on here. So already, even though I'm coming in pretty darn slow, I'm really, really nervous. Again, one funky gust of wind from my tail and I could find myself completely stalled and there's those really sketchy mountains on either side of me that I could end up eating it on. The other problem you have at speeds this low is you end up into the region of reversal, which is pretty fun. If you want to try that, just uh, give yourself full throttle and pull back as hard as you can and watch how you don't go anywhere even though you're at full throttle. There we go. This is basically minimum speed. <laughs> I call this a helicopter landing. So I'm noticing my nose is up quite a bit, not quite as bad as it was a minute ago. Oh, I don't like this. This is literally making me nervous. In the real plane, every once in a while, you'd hear the stall horn go off for just half a moment there, and you go, maybe I'm getting a little slow. Pull the power back a little bit as we're starting to pick up some speed as we start getting close to the runway. I can tell you one thing's for sure. This is going to be a very short landing. There's my big old number tree five. I'm pulling uh, power back. Nose up. Oh my gosh, you have to pull the throttle of the elevator back far. And we're on the ground. Pull back. And let's see how we did this time. 
Nice. <laughs> so uh, we used uh, literally the first one. That's about 900 feet of runway there. And you can see that previously we ended up here. This was at the manufacturer's suggested speed. This was at the minimum, oh my God, dangerous. We're probably going to crash speed. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and try this one more time. But this time we're going to try it uh, doing too much speed and see what happens to our distance used. All right. So now we've got ourselves plenty of altitude. Uh, we've dirtied the plane up. We put the flaps all the way down. And we're going to go ahead and approach at everybody's uh, favorite. I'm just learning to fly this airplane speed of, uh, let's call it 85 knots. Or not 85. That's a little too fast. Let's call it 75 knots. Make it interesting. Okay. So there's our 75 knots. Uh, my flaps are all the way down. The first thing I'm noticing at a speed like this is the fact that I'm pointing the airplane at the ground in order to make it go down, um, which is fine. But it, except for the fact that um, if I were to just land it at the current attitude, I would basically eat propeller. And I wouldn't want to do that too much. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, try to keep it about 75 knots, which you're probably saying nobody lands at 172 at 75 knots. Well, surprise, surprise, in the real world when you're learning to fly, you're going to land it at 75 knots many times before you get it just right. A lot of people get afraid of uh, going slow, and again, I don't blame you. All right, we're doing 72 here. This is really difficult because, like, I have to really push the nose down in order to keep us going at the right speed here. All right, there's a good old runway tree five. Look at how steep the nose is. I'm like pointing almost 10 degrees downwards here. All right, get to the end of the runway. Pull the throttle back, and let's go ahead and put this thing down on the ground. Cross the uh, big old tree five there. I'm going to go ahead and hold the nose up. Oh my gosh, there's the float. Whereas in the real world, when you float, it's um a lot worse than that. Whoa, come on, come on. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, we're on the ground. Hold the brakes. Oh, of course, in the real world, by the way, if you come in too fast, you bounce about four or five times long before you come to a complete stop. Okay, let's take a look. So uh, if you remember, our first landing put us right here. Our second landing with super low speed put us about here. Our third landing came all the way down here. So what can we take away from this? Uh, first of all, make sure you come in at the manufacturer's recommended approach speed. Obviously, when we came in slow, we did use very little runway. It's absolutely correct. But um, remember, I couldn't see, and there's a big scary mountain right here. When we came in the right speed, it was easy to see. It was easy to flare. Again, I held the ground, you know, a few seconds. When it came in too fast, I used almost double the landing distance that I needed. And that was, again, that was just 10 knots too fast. Imagine if you came in at 80, you know, you'd be coming halfway down the runway. Maybe you uh, totally forgot uh, to put your flat down in which case uh, that would have been go around territory i don't even know i could have safely landed the plane at 80 with no flaps with at least without skidding the plane all the way down the runway so hopefully this video helps again that's so uh, this is a fun experiment to do with any airplane if you try with the big jet instead of using you know a thousand feet you end up using like you know 2500 feet or like 5000 feet it's amazing the difference just a few knots will make enjoy